Nathan here, we've got Rose here, just waiting for everyone to hop online. It might take a couple of moments for everyone to hop in. <clears throat> hey everybody, just going live on Insta and, uh, and, um, and Facebook. So uh, got a lot of people uh, joining us this evening from across the, uh, the water in, uh, in New Zealand. Uh, a lot of people are messaging in, when are we going live? Uh, so I'm just leaving you guys to, uh, to join in now and uh, thanks a lot for spending your evening with us. So um, just beside myself normally hopping on for our regular uh, eight o'clock Tuesday chats with, uh, with myself. Uh, tonight we are joined with Rose Renouf. Hi everyone. Uh, a lot of people um, you know, often ask me, you know, how did I build a property portfolio of 200 properties? Um, how did I, you know, get here? You know, Rose has done about 80% of my loans over the last 15 years. Um, yeah, so um, just, just don't worry about it. Yeah, I just want to see the messages. Everybody, yeah, a lot of people, no, it's all here. All here. So, um, yeah, with it, I'll get straight into my part of it, which today I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, uh, what's happening out there in the news, some changes that are happening, what I've been seeing, and then I'm going to leave it all over for Rose. So um, I saw a couple of little uh, memes which are pretty funny. A lot of people were saying that, you know, conspiracy theorists and all that, um, tell those that tell conspiracy theorists to take off their tinfoil hats are now wearing a face mask and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, I don't even know what you'd call that. Call that Rose? Ten fall hatters. It's uh, a lot of conspiracy theories out there. One of the other things that I thought was interesting from this week is uh, all these chicks, right? If you're scrolling through Tinder or something, you'll find chicks that are wearing these masks. Um, and it's just interesting. Uh, this meme uh, goes, it's, is it now making sense why Snapchat has been using random uh, face masks filters for the last two years, right? Is it social conditioning yeah. to put that on? like? I had a chat, Rose's, I call the uh, the scamdemic, a lot of people out there, uh, you know, that may be tuning in for the first time might be thinking, who's this crazy guy talking about finance and property and now he's calling it a scam. Um, I was talking to Rose beforehand about it, like, look at that, why would they be putting that on? Because it's, it's not scamdemic. I think it's a scam. See, we don't always agree. We don't always agree on everything. So, um, just in some of the news from this week, now just as a lot of you guys uh, hop on from uh, from New Zealand and those that are local here as well. Um, I want to go and read out a couple of articles which really uh, resonated with me this week. Um, we're starting to see the death of our currency. I talked a, bit, a lot about this recently uh, in the early days of the scamdemic. Um, I'm going to stop calling it that. I'm going to call it just a GFD because that's all it is. It's a global financial yeah. depression. Do you remember years ago I called yes. it the depression? Yes. And what's happening now? Everything's happening. Everything's well, happening. Well, it's leading to it, right? Apparently, you know, it's all come from a sickness though. So that's why I think the scam is. But it's funny that, you know, you go to the shops and, um, you know, now they won't take your money, right? We talk about currency, we talk about money. They were just yeah. cashless, yes. right? It's because the currency is dying, our money supply is dying, and we are heading to a cashless system. So this one here is a new um, government group that came out. It's called the OCC.gov. Right. Uh, this is the office of Compu the office of the Computroller, C O M P T R O L L E R of the currency. So office of the Computroller um, uh, currency. So the OCC has just put out an article saying the federally chartered banks and thrifts may provide custody service for crypto assets. So we've talked about Bitcoin for years. Yes. A lot of people uh, don't know, but I talk about all random stuff in the office. And, and you're into it too. Big time, big time. Um, so recently it says here, the Office of Computroller of Currency, OCC, today published a letter clarifying the National Banks and Federal Savings Association's authority to provide cryptocurrency custodian services for customers. Uh, national and state banks 
and thrifts are long provided, have long provided safekeeping custody service, including both physical objects and electronic assets. OCC has specifically recognised the importance of digital assets and the authority for the banks to provide safekeeping for such assets since 1988. 1998. Um, the OCC concludes providing that cryptocurrency custodian services, including holding unique cryptographic keys and associated uh, with cryptocurrency, is a modern form of traditional bank activities related to custody services. Basically, um, the banks now are starting to trade uh, cryptocurrency and hold custodian services uh, to be able to provide that. So uh, basically, we are heading to a cashless society. We are heading to a cashless society. We'll, when our currency dies, um, when our currency dies, are we going to end up with a um, a, a, a Bitcoin? I, I highly doubt it. Uh, we're going to end up with some sort of government-issued commie coin, a communist coin that we have here. Um, it'll be something that'll be launched if you have your uh, Corona app uh, on your phone and you have a vaccine. Do, yeah. When you have a vaccine, you've got the app. Yes. Oh, well, wow. you're so paranoid about it. I'd never have it. No. You no. have to. Soon they're going to say that if you take a vaccine, we'll let you into our business. I'm not going to be a part of that. It's just... Well, I just want to be safe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It goes, it goes on to say, um, we're heading to a cashless society, guys, and uh, it goes on to say who the team are. Uh, go check it out, occ.gov uh, is the, the website there. Um, the greatest um, part of calling this a scamdemic um, is that they're wiping the floor with these things, right? Uh, if we have a look at this, this is straight from the World Economic Forum website. The World Economic Forum. So it's uh, W-E-F-O-R-U-M dot org. Um, it goes on to read The Great Reset, a unique twin summit to begin 2020, right? If this isn't set up, right, we accurately predicted that the economy was going to fall off, the, the wheels were going to fall off the cart in October, to, between August and November 2018. And in 2018, in October the 10th, is actually when the, the, the system broke down with um, the, the negative uh, bond rates and, and, and we had a death cross there and we started seeing the, the, the short end of the yielding bonds starting to, um, starting to uh, you know, go strong, like very negative. And since then, we've had a lot of stimulus put in, but now we've got massive levels of stimulus, which will ultimately end up into a hyperinflation. And um, looking at the cost of goods out there, I think every week we should start a, start looking at, you know, cost of goods, what's increasing in value this week? Um, you know, what have you noticed going up in value? Uh, everybody's complaining, food's going up, beef's yeah, going up. Definitely the food, yeah. Everything, cars are going mm. up, houses are going up. Uh, silver's going up, gold's going up, Bitcoin's going up, um, yeah, everything's going up. At the you moment. position yourself really well with the silver, the gold, the Bitcoin. And, I, know. Uh, yeah. I know. A lot of people so, think yeah. I'm silly out there, but um, you know, over the course of the last decade, like I know you've seen you know, me buying yeah. stuff and talking about stuff yes, and talking about yes. moves and a lot of people think that I'm off my head half the time, but uh, you know, things that I used to sound weird for saying a very mainstream now. Like yeah. I, yeah. Um, this week we've seen Bitcoin, like just today, Bitcoin's gone up 11% in a day. Um, we've seen silver go up sort of 30% in a week. Gold I think silver is, but I don't know, Bitcoin didn't really increase as... No, it's massive. Leap, is it really leaping? Yeah, yeah, it went up three grand a day. Oh. Three grand just a day. Two. Cool. In a week, in a week, it's gone up three yeah, grand. I yeah. thought it didn't leap as... Uh... No, it's on its way back. So. Cost of everything's going up, and this article, uh, we are starting, we're in very, very early stages, but we have started the hyperinflation cycle uh, of this market. So it uh, goes on to read, The Great Reset, a unique twin summit to begin in 2021. The Great Reset will be the theme of a unique twin summit in January 21, convened by the World Economic Forum. The Great Reset is a commitment to jointly and urgently build the foundations of our economic and social system for a more fair, sustainable and resilient future. So that's in the first quarter of next year. Why have they started? 20, 2021. 2021. Why, why are they coming out saying they're doing a new social system and an economic system? 
right? And you know the stimulus or the uh, job keeper right is extended up to March of 2021. I know it is. It's so <laughs> I knew it was coming. I actually <laughs> caught a thing called a universal basic income, a UBI, which I've spoken a lot with everyone about on a weekly mm. basis. And um, we're stuck. We're stuck at this point where they've just got to keep printing money, giving away free money. Uh, to people, to businesses, uh, to keep the system propped up. But, you know, um, one of the things um, is the LIBOR market um, is going to expire, I think, in 2022. Lynette Zhang um, from, um, yeah, ITM Trading, which is over in the US, she talked about it maybe about 12 months ago, which was the reset of the LIBOR rates, which is the interbank lending yes. between each other. Yeah. And um, that ends in 2021 or 2022. So we know Soon. that the whole system's got to be mm. reset. And here we are with the World Economic Forum talking about, I don't understand like if it's economic, why are we having a social, um, a more fair social system, right? Is it social credits? Is it the way the currency's working? Like somewhere between now and when the currency completely dies, I still believe somewhere three, five, seven, ten 10 years time, we'll see the hyperinflation and the currency die. But, you know, why- So we will we be trading with silver and gold then? No, no, it's never gonna go back never there. Gonna it's never gonna go back there. A lot of people will hope for that. I think that social credits, like the way that you behave, you know, you're a good boy. Here's a, here's, you know, five dollars. You know, you've been a good, good lady, Rose. You can go and, you know, get a hundred dollars of mm. e-bucks that you can use. You, you get your job keeper this week because you've had a. So who's going to monitor your your character to get the so, social credit? How how do they? That's the that's the scary part, right? So that's the scary part, right? It's um. So they they go on to say. Um, the, the Great Reset is a commitment to jointly and urgently build the foundations for the economic and social system to be more fair. Urgent. Why are we urgently having this? Um, if the if the currency is not going to die and everything's perfectly fine, why are we urgently needing to do this? So would it be one day <coughs> we're going to have the, you know, we get the Equifax for the credit reporting, we're going to have social credit reporting? 100%. If you think about it, um, Core Logic, which we never heard of beforehand, yeah. bought out RP Data. Mm. So now globally, every country is using the same credit reporting. Yes. We've got open banking, right? Mm. This has slowly been happening over the course of the last um, few years, last three, four mm. years, it's been playing out. Um, now we've got the, the same Equifax reporting, whether it's here in Australia, whether it's in New Zealand, it whether is, it's in the yeah. US. It's the track and trace, tag and tag. Like it's like it is true chipped. though, because we haven't experienced with one of our expats, right? We never known that he's got another company yeah. and he never really declared because he never thought it's relevant because it's yeah. purely used for buying property overseas. Yeah. And St. George found it out. Yeah. We it's, couldn't, yeah. Yeah, and it's, but, it's yeah. we've got open banking And now. this is in overseas. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a world that we're living in. Like, it's going to yeah, get worse. Yeah, I said to my client, you do have, like I said, oh, it's not even trading. Just got to make sure that the, uh, there's a phone call coming through my, using my phone up there. It's just uh, never ending. Um, exactly, and that's that's the world we're going into. Yeah. We're going to a cashless society. When I call it a scamdemic, um, they're wiping the floor with this. They're wiping the floor with the fact we've got a, a health crisis. It says, actually says here, the next point for this World Economic Forum uh, event is the global health crisis has laid bare the long-standing ruptures in our economies and societies that create a social crisis that urgently, urgently requires decent, meaningful jobs. They're using it. This is on the government. This is worldeconomicforum.com or .gov.org. So, um, yeah, I've posted this in Birchfeed. If you're not on Birchfeed, go to birchfeed.com. Uh, it's free access. Go there, sign up, and I'll, after our live today, I'll post a copy of this into uh, into it. Um, but yeah, um, looking at the next thing, the Twin Summit will be both in person and virtual, connecting key global governmental and business leaders in Davos with a global multi-stakeholder network in 400 cities around the world for a forward-oriented dialogue driven by the younger generation. The announcement of Great Reset is made by the HRH, the Prince of Wales. The Prince of Wales. Right, we talked about this last week, right? Like we've got this monarchy, who are these people? Yeah. What are they controlling? Uh, all this sort of stuff. So um, yeah, here we are, it's organized by the, the, the monarchy, the monarchy um, yeah. and uh, you know, here we are looking at 
the, where it's going to be. Um, it reads on to say, in Geneva, Switzerland, 3rd of June 2020, the Great Reset will be the theme of the unique Twin Summit. The 51st World Economic uh, Forum annual meeting will bring together global leaders from government, business, civil society and stakeholders around the world in a unique configuration that includes both in-person and virtual dialogues. Uh, we only have one planet and we know that with climate change could be the next global disaster, even more dramatic consequences for mankind. Uh, we have to decarbonise the economy in a short window. Um, uh, it goes on to read a lot, so I'm not going to read it all out, but why? Why are we going to have a Great Reset? Tell me about the Great Reset. Let's question ourselves, right? Are we going to be these guys here that are being told we're a conspiracy theorist? <laughs> right? The same people that said you're wearing a tinfoil hat is wearing a mask and all that. So uh, it's, uh, I'm not discrediting saying that there's no sickness or people may not be getting hurt or whatever the case may be, but I think it's really... Um, important to question, you know, other agendas that are being pushed at this point in, in time. Um, on my final and last um, topic of, that I want to talk about before everyone comes over to hear what Rose has to say and ask Rose questions about financing their, their portfolios, um, a lot of people continuously ask the debate, you know, are we going to see a property crash, you know, property prices are going to go down, etc, etc. Um, I wish we would see a property crash, like I really do. Imagine the amount of properties we could pick up on cheap. You remember when I first yeah, met yes. you in the middle of the GFC? No one else knows me from when I was right back in the early days yeah. when in the middle of the GFC I was, I was picking up these properties that were, um, you know, selling for, you know, in Sydney for 110, 120,000. Mm -hmm. They were selling for 300 grand beforehand. That was an amazing, amazing time. Um, a lot of people are thinking we're going to see, you know, a crash. Will we see a crash? I wish we would see a crash. Um, 2005, 2004, there was high price of properties. 2005, it went down, Yeah, right? it crashed I before remember, the yeah, GFC. Before the GFC, yeah, 2005. And then when the GFC yeah. came, what happened? They gave 14 grand home and a grand. Yes, 40, They gave 000. interest rates, came down from 7.25 at the RBA to 3%. Yeah. Um, interest rates fell down by 60 percent mm. in a, about four months and uh, we had the biggest boom that we'd ever seen yes, and yes. here we sit in uh, 2020 and you know everyone's scared that we're going to see a property mm. crash or hoping for it um, a little bit about what I'm seeing a bit about this article this here's from uh, Yahoo it was just a basic article on it this goes here new law saving buyers thirty two thousand dollars on their home the new south Wales government will temporarily scrap steam duty on homes worth less than eight hundred thousand dollars with around six thousand buyers uh, set to receive the benefit premier gladys berejiklian said on monday the scheme will be available to first home buyers and builds on the ten thousand dollar first home at a grant which is accessible for those purchasing a home less, less than six hundred thousand dollars or those building a home worth uh, 750000 or less. So let's just think about this, right? Free stamp duty. Right? That is applicable to everyone, not just for the first home buyers? Uh, so just first home buyers. We've got a $10,000 first home and a grant yes. as well. Yeah. We've got a $25,000 for everybody, for building. first building. 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 Um, if you're a first homeowner, you can get the... the Free the stamp duty, the, the, the 10000 the 25000 The 5% deposit where the bank pays the, the other 15%. The mortgage insurance waiver. You can put your mortgage on hold for the next six months. Yeah. yeah. Right? Your interest rates are at a quarter percent at the RBA. Your interest rates are at a bank, like you just wrote a loan that's settling tomorrow for me, which was like 2.65 or 2.69%. Yeah, um, so we're now we're sitting at a point where it costs you nothing to get into a property. They're paying you to take a property. Mm -hmm. They're paying you to keep the property. Right? What an yeah. amazing world! Right? And also for those first home buyers, for example, like uh, rent that they pay can be formed part of their five percent genuine savings. Really? Yes. Okay. I learn things every day still. <laughs> yeah. So it's 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 interesting to see out there the amount of stimulus that's going in yeah, the market. Yeah. Um, I, I truly wish we would see a property crash, but it's not, it's, not gonna it's opposite. Um, one other thing I've seen, and I know it's a very sore point for Rose, she doesn't like when people pull their 10,000 out of their super, um, which obviously don't advocate for. Um, I'll be very clear with all of my investors, not that I give financial advice, but those that are close to me and whatnot, um, about the pitfalls of pulling your money out of your super. A lot of people think, wow, I can get 10 grand, right? But it screws up your purchasing ability and the ability yes, to get a loan. To borrow. Yeah. Mm. Um, 
but I, th- I was thinking about the other day because there's been a big change in the property market in the last sort of three months in, 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 in sort of the East Coast more so here in Australia. Um, is that all the blocks of land, there's blocks of land that you could pick up in regional towns for like 30 grand, 20 grand, 40 grand, 10 grand. Um, like I've picked up maybe a dozen blocks of land this year. Wasn't that like you're selling a 70,000 block of land? Yeah, I got a $17,000 block of land the other week with an average price of $8.95 a square metre for the land. So cheaper than yeah, carpet yeah. to buy land. Um, there's blocks of land they're not available anymore everything that's under 200 250,000 has sold mm-hmm. now um, i'm experiencing that in capital cities like say in brisbane picking up for 150 140 becoming harder picking up mm. in sydney for under 300 is becoming harder mm. um, it appears that i was thinking about this the other day could it be that there could be some people that are husband and wife and they've got 10 grand 10 grand 10 grand mm. 10 grand there's a lot of people that have been renting for 20 years or so never been able to buy a property and now they've got the opportunity with all these grants and the ability to get yeah. the money to get into property and you know, it's, it's putting a pent up of demand in the bottom end of the market and obviously the cost of building will go up we'll see inflation in the build costs in the food costs in the cost of their new tools like tools like moving house right the cost of stuff is insane cost of paint you cost would of have i'm sitting there i'm like mm. I don't want to pay this, right? Everyone mm-hmm. thinks I'm rude because I don't want to pay certain things like the furniture shops. Um, going out there to the shops, everything is becoming more and more expensive by the week. Yeah, I know a friend, like they own a, um, they do a lot for uh, buys, right? He yeah. says, we're growing. We, we didn't, we were not affected with the uh, COVID. However, the cost of the ingredients was doubled. Yeah. So there's, you know, I mean, how much can you increase yeah. the price? For a buy, yeah, it's and a placement food, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. A lot of babies love it. I think so. Yeah, everyone says Aussie boy over here, he loves to eat meat pies. <laughs> but you know, our New Zealand audience might be <laughs> like, you know, I don't know if they eat meat pies in New Zealand, but yeah. Um, but yeah, with, with it, everything, like whether it be the mints to go into a pie, whether it be the beef, whether it be the salt, whether it be mm. whatever, like we're going through massive inflation. This is very early days. Um, on the note, like, I'm going to wrap this up. Mm. I think we've got a lot of people online now, mm. so we can start talking about the finance and, and New Zealanders uh, getting finance in Australia. But just on the last note, I've had a lot of people messaging in the last week, tell me about silver, should I buy silver, should I sell it, gold, buy, sell, whatnot. Um, the, um, thanks for the, the shout outs, everyone on, on Insta and, and on Facebook. Um, looking at um, you know, should you be rushing out to buy silver? Should you be rushing out to buy Bitcoin? Uh, I personally own a lot of this stuff. Rose will probably laugh. She's oh like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> he's got no place to put them. And <laughs> they go, they go, they go everywhere. So, um, looking at the, um, you know, should you go out and, you know, buy this stuff now and spend 50 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand on buying gold or silver or Bitcoin? Um, I think it should be a part of a regular sort of strategy. Uh, I've per- personally been collecting this stuff, you know, gold and silver, since 2000, 2000 2001, uh, before I could buy a since property. Since you were 15? Since yeah. I was 15, yeah, yes. yeah. I used to catch a train down at, um, down at Blacktown Station and pick it up from down at Blacktown. Yeah. And, um, and for Bitcoin, I've been buying that for uh, sort of six, seven years, uh, six years probably, uh, mm-hmm. into crypto. I know um, you're mining, you're it, mining, it, mining yeah. it, farming cryptocurrencies. Um, and I've never gone in and gone, okay, here's a hundred grand, let's go dump it in. It's always been, you know, here's 200 bucks, here's 500 bucks, here's a thousand bucks, so whatever I could afford to put into it at the time, uh, cause I don't expect to get it back. People say to me, when are you going to sell your silver? It's like, well, I don't plan on it, right? If it hits a thousand bucks an ounce, you might start seeing Nathan sell some silver. If it goes to from twenty grand, uh, twenty dollars to sixty dollars or a hundred dollars, I'm not going to sell. I'm just going to keep it, right? But when the currency dies, is when I'll probably offload some of it to pay out my debt. So my strategy is to use other financial instruments to pay out my debt. Um, a lot of people don't realise that you know investing. The reason why the business is called Be Invested is not that it's called you know, Birchie's Property. Uh, you know, business. That's what I thought. Be for birds, right? Yeah, it is. Be for birds. Yeah. But invested. Be invested. I'm an investment yeah, firm. Yeah. So yeah. we're an investment firm. We help people invest, uh, have different strategies for all different areas of your life. Um, and yeah, so mm. on that note, um, I know there's a lot of 
New Zealanders here this evening. Uh, it's eight o'clock over there, so we won't keep them up too long to keep them uh, from bed and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to touch base with Aussie guys that are watching every week and the new guys that are like, I thought we are coming in for a, a finance video. Why is this guy talking about weird stuff with the economy? If you're new around here, um, do hit up the like, do share it, do subscribe. Um, and yeah, feel free to reach out if you've got any other questions. I do put a lot of videos out. Generally, it's uh, eight o'clock on Tuesday nights, uh, live in Sydney time. Uh, this week, we're going earlier at six o'clock, so our friends in uh, New Zealand can be here. So uh, over to you, Rose. So um, yeah. So um, what I would like to talk about is, um, for example, New Zealander, or this can also be applicable to uh, any expats down there. Okay. With the New Zealand residents, obviously you can buy properties here in Australia and also can borrow money here in Australia. Yeah. So the way we assess the um, the loan is we obviously take the, the foreign income, which is your New Zealand, wherever you're employed in New Zealand, mm -hmm. we'll take that income and we the way it was is similar to all expats, right? Yeah. Wherever you are. Yeah. But the good thing about it, because as a New Zealander, you can buy properties here. You yeah. don't need a foreign investment review board to yeah. to buy a property. So with it, like, let's put one little disclaimer as well, because uh, mm. Stephen Sidorowski, the lawyer, yeah. uh, mentioned there's two different types. So um, if you'd like to, if you are a New Zealander, you do want to purchase um, a property in Australia or wherever, mm. um, uh, flick us over a message. I do own a law firm called Zenith Legal. I can get uh, Stephen Sidorowski, my principal lawyer over there, to give you some uh, personal feedback as to how it could affect from stamp duty. Because some uh, some people buying mm -hmm. in Australia, they may incur an extra sort of seven so, seven yeah, sort of yeah. percent stamp duty. So some people do have to pay the extra stamp duty. I think it's like twelve point five percent or something. Isn't I it? think it's a an extra seven yeah, or yeah, eight. Yeah. So if it's On in New South it, Wales. Yeah. I believe it's 8% extra. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's in um, Queensland, it is 7% extra. So there so, is a surcharge. Yeah, there is a yeah, surcharge, yeah. 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 However, <coughs> however, the you can borrow the, the way we assess it. For example, New Zealand local, uh, New Zealand dollar, right? We convert it, the, the bank would assess 80% of your foreign income. So for example, if you're earning 100,000, that means we'll do an 80% of that, which is uh, 80,000 and then Convert it to Aussie dollars. Yep. No, the living expenses obviously is based on Australian yep. living expenses measure. Yeah. But uh, you can. There's no discrimination with the interest rate that you're getting. Yep. It's uh, it's sim the same as uh, here in Australia. However, some banks would uh, lend you up to eighty percent. Some bank would lend you a seventy percent. Yeah. So, but interest rate is similar yeah. to any local. So it's not difficult, so easy to do it. Especially yeah. from New Zealand, because, you know, yeah. you're just across, across the, water. the water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. And um, look at, um, I was seeing a few people here messaging about um, the, uh, that we haven't talked about the subject matter yet. So we're getting into it, guys. Um, so yeah, looking at um, how difficult it is for someone that's in New Zealand wanting to buy in Australia, like what would the process be, um, what sort of banks would allow, so no, like if you're in the US for example, it would be different lenders and different institutions that would lend, yep. whereas New Zealanders being part of, you know, the Commonwealth. Well, the definitely the, the main, uh, when it comes to expats, I only, I use the four main banks, the National Australia Bank, CBA. ANZ Bank and St. George Bank and West Bank, right? Yeah. Now, the process is that uh, they, they, the, the process is very, it's the same as the local one, except that your currency is, we don't take the full 100% of that income. Yeah. Now, we, there is not much for self-employed. Self-employed is, I only know one lender that can do it. I think it's Citibank. Okay. However, I haven't had much success with self-employed. Okay. But definitely for pay YG. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that there's nothing there. Self-employed, we can have Citibank, but. Yeah. And what, um, what sort of differences would there be um, if you're a, an Australian citizen living in New Zealand, or if you're a New Zealand citizen, like what would Australian, we have one that the Australian living in New Zealand will be treated as an expat. Yeah. The same way as 
any yeah. New Zealand yeah. buying a property from here. Yeah. It is it's considered expert because we're using the foreign currency. Yeah. So the currency is different being obviously naturally if it's in New Zealand dollars or Aussie dollars, so the banks have to take into consideration the, the fluctuation. There is a conversion the no, we do the conversion rate on the day yeah. we apply we we launch the application. Yeah. So okay. uh, yeah. So we take all the uh, we take all the liabilities the same, the same requirement, like in terms of uh, proof of your current loan, if you have an existing loan in New Zealand, yeah. uh, rental, yeah. it's the same. It's the same process. We need all those documents. It's just really a, the the only thing. The difference between the local Australian and the expats is the um, the income yeah. is only eighty percent. Can you help people that live in New Zealand want to buy in New Zealand? Can you help them with that? No, no. it's only, thing only to buy when you buy properties here Australia. because okay. I'm not really yeah experienced yeah. on that. Yeah, and also I think uh, the lender said would like to see the properties right here. Yeah, okay. they're not gonna be lending you money. Yeah, to purchase somewhere else or yeah. And this is property. I often see uh, you know a lot of people trying to sell off the plan sort of properties that are like you know you have to buy a new property to buy in Australia um, or. or and you can't buy a second-hand property. Um, if someone's buying from New Zealand, do they have to buy a new property, or can they buy? No, a you can buy any property, established any property. or brand new. You can buy a property. Yeah. yeah, there is no limitation as to what you can buy. As I said, okay. it's exactly the same yeah. as the locals. However, it's only the the yeah. income that is assessed at eighty percent. Yeah. So it's, uh, but that's only from a finance side of things. So as I said, if you are thinking of buying and you're from New Zealand, you want to buy in Australia, there is some legal aspects around entities and uh, and the stamp duty uh, components of it. Each state is different, each territory is different from a stamp duty perspective. Um, it would be important to, to uh, obviously find out information on that front, mm -hmm. but you can, if you want to flick us a message or write us a message here or send us a, a, a private message, um, I can put you in contact with Stephen Sidorowski from Zenith Legal mm -hmm. on that front. Um, we normally, as a broker, we normally determine like how much you have as a deposits, and we determine what are the costs. Yeah. So we probably factor like what would be the stamp duty. Then, yeah. yeah, into it. Yeah. Cool. And I encourage a lot of people to ask the questions over as well. If you have any uh, questions for Rose, um, uh, but I, I'm going to go through the, the feed here now, specifically on Facebook here. Uh, question from. Chris, uh, by self-employed, does that mean owning a, pro a, a proprietary limited company as well? A self-employed could be a, a sole trader or a PTY. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Tracy has asked, uh, I have a property here, can I leverage from New Zealand? Well, I think the best way for you, uh, Tracy, is to, to borrow, when you do leverage, is we cannot really touch the property in New Zealand, right? So I think you have to go to your local bank yeah. and see if you can borrow more money to purchase property here in Australia. So harvest the equity mm -hmm. from your uh, current, current property, lender. from your current local lender, Yeah. see if they can allow you that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But definitely we cannot touch those properties. Okay. We, so if someone was in New Zealand uh, and they had 200,000 worth of equity, mm -hmm. go to the local bank in New Zealand, yeah. pull out that equity, yes. and then use that 200,000 worth to of equity as property. deposits. So um, just for some of, the, some of you watching um, that aren't familiar with Australian pricing, uh, from I do quite a lot of map sessions over in New Zealand, and I don't know the market over there, so I don't profess to know what happens in your native country. Um, however, uh, one thing I've been told a lot is that when I talk about properties in like Sydney for 250, 300,000, when I talk about properties in sort of Brisbane and other states in the capital cities for like 150, 180 mm -hmm. grand, or properties like I just did a block of land today, uh, two and a half hours from Sydney for thirty-two thousand dollars for a block Whoa. of land. Yeah, two and a half hours. Oh, uh, well, we can't yeah. really yeah. disclose that. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, it was a very, very cheap block of land. Um, apparently, in New Zealand, there's no uh, little cheap properties like this and no infill parts of the city. So, um, in order to buy in Australia, if you are sort of like a, a New Zealand uh, citizen or resident uh, buying abroad, um, you can purchase in sort of Sydney for under 300 grand. You can buy in Queensland and Brisbane, Gold Coast sort of area for 150, 200 thousand dollars. These things typically have a rental return of around, if it's about 150 grand in Brisbane, rent for 250, oh. 200 grand, rent for 300 bucks a week. Um, That's positive here, right? Positive, yeah, mm -hmm. positive. 
Um, so you can buy positive cash flow properties uh, here in Australia and be able to source those sorts of things. So um, on on that front, um, just to give a bit of a background as to what uh, sort of properties uh, cost and whatnot. Um, a question here from Adrian, uh, can you get me a better deal on a self-managed super fund loan that that person has? This is, a, with a self-managed super fund, uh, a lot of ban banks like we grow the they, they stop the product, so yeah. there is not much lender there, but we there are still like um, La Trobe, uh, La Trobe, Pe yeah. uh, Liberty Think Tank, yeah. they still can lend. I am, we're currently using La Trobe a lot at the okay. moment, yeah. because um, look, the rate is not that sharp, but Liberty has a very good rate at the moment, Yeah. but uh, sometimes it's also, you know, like yeah. a bit expensive setup. Yeah. But you might yeah. as well do invest in properties than shares. Yeah. We can't give that financial advice to people, but they... <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Sorry, disclaimer. <laughs> uh, we don't give financial advice here. A um, uh, question here from Josh. Josh asked, hi guys, I'm a Kiwi living in Hong Kong. Uh, would the same rules apply? If you are a Kiwi, as long as you can prove that you are a citizen of uh, New Zealand, yeah. yes, you can buy a property here. Okay. Yeah. We'll use the, uh, wherever you work, that's the currency we're going to be using as, as yeah. uh, for assessment purposes. That will be the, the basis of, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. cool, that's good. Good questions. I'm learning stuff here as well, guys. So, uh, Jonathan, hope you're doing well, bro. Um, how is New Zealand rental income looked at? And factored in. It's the know? same, we, uh, the same, <clears throat> in Australia, the rental assessment here is either 70% or 80% of the rental, right? So yours will be traded the same, either 70 or 80%. Now, obviously, we have to convert that in Aussie dollars. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. And um, Lee just wrote here, tuning in from New Zealand. Hey, 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 Lee. Uh, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for everyone tuning in from across um, the uh, in New Zealand today. Um, it's humbling being of a, 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 a source for you guys uh, and girls, of course. Um, over there and uh, being of a, a motivation and, and inspiration to, 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 to help you. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's good to see you guys here. And Michael, if I get a loan from my bank account uh, in England, will it affect my borrowing power when I start buying a property portfolio with Nathan when I become a permanent resident in Australia? Yes, yeah. definitely. It will affect your borrowing power because they, the bank now look at, there are so many ways they can find out that you have an existing loan or existing liabilities in the country where you are, as I said, like, you know, they, they, they need to look at your transaction account, your savings account. The last three months, if they can see there's a payment coming out there, they will yeah. question it. And if there's payment coming in as well, you must have some income of what, or a rental yeah. income, they will be able to find out. Yeah. We live in a, a, a borderless world now. So, um, from Sam here, hope all is well. Nathan's language seems a lot more subdued and less swearing tonight. Hope he is okay. <laughs> I'm doing well. Is yeah, something um, to do with me next to you? Uh, no, it says here, um, yeah, like maybe it, it could be, or maybe I'm being uh, less, uh, uh, you know, yeah, exciting today and, and, and whatnot, because, um, yeah, maybe it's I'm raining. holding back on the. Uh, the, the swearing, uh, but I think more so just due to the fact that we've got a new audience here of uh, people that may be tuning in for the first time and, you know, I, I do let a lot of swearing out and I do let a lot of passion and do talk about a lot of weird things. So, um, yeah, I, I guess for those that are new here, I don't want to scare them off with uh, too much weird stuff, but um, it goes on to read, Sam's uh, question was, uh, do Australian and New Zealand banks search mortgages in each other's country for borrowers? I think you just yeah, answered yes, that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, two, can a New Zealand company pay someone an Australian salary and vice versa and use this for the serviceability? I think any income that you have received, right, as long as you can see a pattern that it is uh, deposited into your account, they can verify the company, where the money comes from, yeah. and if it is a legit, and sometimes the bank will go further, you need a tax return anyway, mm -hmm. and if it's declared there, it is legit. Yeah. So it could be worthwhile having a chat with Rose on that front. Uh, three, any way to use equity in a property in New Zealand to borrow an Australian property and vice versa, thanks, which we talked we didn't about We did discuss it, right? We discussed yeah. beforehand. So um, yeah, you can uh, possibly, potentially pull out equity from New Zealand, use that capital to buy something in Australia and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So um, 
Uh, Daya, it's 22 minute marks, still nothing about the subject matter. Much appreciated. The speaker is respectful. The audience time sticks to the topic, which we are trying to, guys. Um, just trying to read some questions here from everyone. Uh, good evening, Rose and Nathan. Have you got, haven't got time to stay with you tonight, but very keen on meeting you in the upcoming reads. Look forward to, um, to meeting you as well. Um, Justin asked, can you do loans uh, interstate on video conference calls, Rose? Yeah, we do yeah. though. No, because yeah. what happened if, uh, for example, we do a lot of Zoom. That's yeah. how we, what we do to identify clients now is the bank require you, we Zoom, we, we Zoom, 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 Zoom call, Zoom, yeah, Zoom call, yeah. yeah. And then you have to raise your passport, your driver's license, and we do screenshot for that. Wow. Yeah, that's how, and then, uh, for example, with ANZ Bank, bank if you are an expat, for example, or they will require or they will require a local, an Australian mobile phone number. Okay. Prior to settlement, they would call you yeah. and ask all these questions. Okay. They can even set up a bank account for you <laughs> on okay. the phone. Yeah. Wow. Well, cool. And it's all the AML anti-money laundering um, sort of rulings that they've got nowadays to uh, to, to obviously once again track and, and, and trace uh, our movements as humans in case people do want to go from one border to another. Um, I think it'd be good for you and Justin to have a chat as well, so I'll yeah, offline yeah. just remind me and we'll uh, hook you up for a chat. Um, ben, can you settle on land and build? Um, I don't know what capacity uh, you mean by that, um, but if you can settle on land, you can build. Like, Would that be for New Zealand, like if you're going to build here in Australia, um, could you do a construction loan? I guess you can do a construction loan here in Australia. I mean, as long as the property, I think the main thing is the properties are here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If it is here, of course, you can do loan and construction. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I would have thought as well. Yeah. Um, Tracy, there is a there is capacity from here. We are in Auckland. Awesome. Um, Sanjay, can we add stamp duty to the mortgage? We can only borrow as much as like the LVR, the loan valuation ratio. Say for example, the purchase price is 800,000. Mm -hmm. We can only borrow if the bank allows you to lend 80%. Mm -hmm. ANZ can lend you up to 80%, mm -hmm. some banks 70%. Mm -hmm. That's all, yeah. If yeah, it's a purchase, you can't really like uh, increase the sum duty. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing would apply here in Australia for Australians yeah. as well. Um, uh, basic typical loan uh, would be a, a, an 80, maybe a 70% to 80% mm. LVR. Um, stamp duty, um, it, it, it varies. Like um, generally, I normally try and calculate around the, the 3% for stamp duty. Uh, there is a lot of yeah. online calculators that you can mm. use to calculate the stamp duty. Um, but do note that if you are um, a specific type of resident and how the structure works, you may have to pay an extra stamp duty, which could be uh, eight percent in New South Wales or seven percent in Queensland, mm -hmm. uh, which would be important to check that out first if you are buying from abroad uh, on on that side of things. Yeah. So, um, Luke, uh, what sort of rates for self managed super fund are you seeing in Australia? For a residential loan, we probably look five percent more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, Tracy said, keep up the weird stuff. There's plenty of sheep here, thanks to Auntie Jacinta. Look, I don't know much about, uh, I don't want to get into politics over there, but uh, I do scratch my head over here thinking, wow, like this is uh, some, some crazy, crazy stuff of being under house arrest uh, over there. Uh, Lee, you've helped light an investment fire in my belly with your insight and experience. I might need a hose to put it out. <laughs> awesome. Humbled to be able to do it's so. <laughs> Um, and it's, it says here, um, I saw uh, Tracy said it's getting hot here in Auckland, it's insane pricing right now. Um, that's really interesting to see because uh, throughout the last property boom that we saw uh, from about the years of 2011 to 2016, 2017, um, I used to uh, get the, the news articles from every uh, country around the world and it used to say that Kenya house prices are unaffordable. Kenya, right? Yeah. House yeah. prices are unaffordable. Canada, uh, the US, the UK, um, all, all different um, countries around the world have the same news on their front stories mm -hmm. of the newspapers um, and it's interesting to see you know that, that, that you guys in NZ uh, having a, um, a you know a, a property sort of boom in the markets heating up that's just simply due to the, all the stimulus packages that are being printed out there's money being thrown around everywhere at the moment globally in order to um, sort of 
yeah, stimulate the economy. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out over the course of the next couple of years. Um, uh, Luke asked, uh, do Australian lenders require full disclosure on all offshore assets and liabilities? I'll leave that one for you. Yes, yes, we do. We yeah. do. Because, uh, look, home contents, obviously not, but uh, if you have properties and we require the rental of that property, yeah. it's probably for your best interest to do that. Yeah. At the same token, you have to disclose the liabilities. Yeah. But any substantiated income yeah. is... We can we can use that for yeah. servicing. Servicing, okay. Yeah. Alicia asked, "Do you have similar AML requirements, and do we do with the lawyer here in New Zealand?" Uh, so, any money laundering uh, requirements? Um, that's probably more of a legal question. I could get Stephen Sidorowski to answer that one for you. I think what you. it is the AML requirement, right? We yeah. we we check the. Okay, that's why that is why it is required that your pay slip. If you get paid, say, a net of 2000 where does that money goes in? So we have to look at the bank account. Yeah. So there is, we require salary credits. Okay. That can avoid yeah. the money laundering, right? Because yeah. we can see it all. And the yeah. tax return as well. Yeah. Yeah. So and I think sometimes like holding the license up, taking a photo, that sort of stuff, like some lenders this have requested just, that. Yeah, that's just for 100 points, I, oh, no, I guess. Yeah. But for the AML, yeah. they want to know where the money come from. Yeah. How do you acquire the, the wealth? Is it through your salaries or? Yeah. 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 Um, and Jonathan said here, thanks Nathan, likewise, we do eat meat pies, uh, always blowing the fire. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Um, how is New Zealand debt looked at for servicing? Do you take the actual repayments or put a blanket interest rate in New Zealand debt? Yeah, we do have a, uh, we do, we look at the actual actual interest rate that you're currently getting and then we put a 2.5% uh, buffer yeah. and that's how we assess the loan. Okay. Now the bank has a benchmark, say for example, okay, they said it's 5.40, this is for assessment, right? Say 5.40% or mm -hmm. The higher of the two. Two, yeah, yeah. So if you're getting a two and a, if you're getting a two percent rate and you add two and a half, that's four point yeah, five. So you use five point four. Five point four. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, Francesca, uh, so for self-employed and your own companies having high cash flow still isn't enough for the bank. They they don't have much. A lot of banks that I know they don't have much appetite for an expat self-employed. Yeah. I think, but we I know that. Uh, yeah. Citibank does. Citibank. So yeah. there is there there is a there is lender, lender out yeah. there. Yes. Yeah, there is lender. Yeah. So if you are, you know, thinking about if you are self employed, there is options, but yes. the limited options. So mm -hmm. yeah, maybe Rose can have a have a chat yeah. with you on that on that front. Uh, Justin, thanks for Rose and Nath. Uh, let's talk further about some opportunities. We'll give you a call. Awesome Justin. Chat to you soon. Um, Bevan, hi, my fiance and I are both Australian citizens but living in South Africa at the moment. We are keen to continue investing in Sydney using our uh, Aussie based Poetry Limited generating global income. Some questions one, what are the LVR levels uh, on company lending? So if you were to go to Citibank, what would the. This oh, would be 80%? It could or? be, no, no? this would okay. be 70. Yeah. 70 yeah. I think. Major banks, yeah. even with other banks, they, yeah. don't, they only lend 70%. Right. Yeah, okay. there's only one bank that, CBA only lends 60%. Yeah. 60% uh, of their income, okay. can, they can do 80%, but it depends how much they they will take out of your income. Some 80%, 70%, oh, 80% of your income, they can yeah. lend an LVR of 70% or 80%, yeah. Yeah, so it's much, um, there's many variables, like the more, yeah. the more elements that you're adding into the mixture, the more, sort of mm. risk. I capital. think when we do expats, for example, we, we tend to look at first, can you service the loan? Which lender that can service, that can mm. take 80% of your income? Because some lenders there, they'll only take 60% mm -hmm. of the foreign income. Okay. So we look at the servicing first. Yeah. And then, then we'll look at the LVR. Do you have enough deposit to go, if we have yeah. to go with this lender, then if you can do 70%, that means you require 30% deposit. Yeah. yeah. So we look at all scenarios, servicing, as well as how much deposit you have. Yeah. And the typical uh, number of historical year financials required, much limited versus was sole trader until recently. So if someone, Two years. Yeah. So if you've been a sole trader, and you're going to convert from sole trader to Pipe Limited to a company, um, would you still require 
to we use still the required to use. If, okay. if we can prove that, you know, there's some, you know, we have one client from salt trading to PPY. Yeah. Right? No. As long as, because the requirement is you must be a self-employed for at least two years, and yeah. sometimes with PTY you can only verify one year because you were a sole trader. Yeah. As long as we can prove that it, there was a continuity, yeah. the business is yeah. the same, yeah. then, then we can do it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Alicia asked, is it lower of the purchase price or the value you can borrow? It's the lower of, it's the, lower of, of the purchase price and valuation. Yeah. So if you're buying a property for 200 grand, um, and the valuation comes in at 250, you can only borrow based, based on the on 200. The, the lower of the two. If you do unfortunately buy something that's overvalued and you pay 200 and it's only valued in at 150, then you can only get a loan based on 150 on that occasion. So uh, Matt just said, hey, uh, so you're Rose, nice to put a face to the name. Sorry for the confusion Is earlier. Matt, who? Matt Crouch. Oh, He's, hi, Matt. Yes, I spoke yeah. to him today. Right. So. Um, uh, Lydia, hopefully you're doing well uh, there, Lydia. Uh, hi, Rose and Nathan, got a few properties in Queensland but living in Papua New Guinea and currently uh, stand down on so no pay slips. I obviously can't service for a loan uh, for another as I don't have a salary. Is there any other way that we can apply for a loan um, in any, any other investment property without having to produce pay slips as PAYG employee? Or do I need to start a side business, passive income? Thank you for your assistance. I think. You know, we need to have uh, yeah, income yeah, yeah, coming yeah, through. Yeah, you need to have yeah, income. You need to have an income. Yeah, so maybe... Um, You're talking I about think from, it, yeah. I think for the moment, no, no. So I think she wants to build her portfolio. Yeah, out, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to have an income. But if, um, from memory, I think Lydia's like a pilot, um, from memory. And, um, yeah, with it, um, I think that, yeah, once we can either get a new job, then Rose could help you out once mm -hmm. we've got a new job mm -hmm. or got income coming back through. Um, so it might be best to get a job for the time being and be able to get yeah, some lending. Yeah, definitely and, you need yeah. income. Yeah. Uh, Tracy, uh, I've seen a YouTube from the walk around the world saying the sky is going to fall in uh, on property. Should we be concerned about this or just unsubscribe to the channel? <laughs> so much uncertainty out there and confusing what angle these economists are taking. Very uh, good question, Tracy. Um, though I don't want to go and talk in negative about people out there uh, but what I do want to draw our attention to is uh, obviously always be careful of where you're getting your knowledge from um, there's a lot of miserable uh, people out there on YouTube and, and Facebook and in the world which are you know saying that the sky is going to fall in and that we've got this economic Armageddon and you know generally they're, they're talking people to buy silver and gold and precious metals there's so many doomsayers out there uh, and uh, there's been different phases in my life and my career in, in business and uh, there's been times where people have called me a property spruker for saying property prices are going to go up. There's been times where people have said that I'm a tinfoil hatter and I'm a doomsayer. Uh, I'm just relaying what I'm seeing, the data that I'm seeing and the things that have come across on a day-to-day -day basis to be able to paint a picture of what moves we need to go through next. If you're driving down the road and going on a trip and you see that we've got sunny sky and then we go to night time and then it starts hailing on you, you'll need to have different hazard sort of preparedness uh, to minimise the, the, the risks along the way and I think it's you know crucial to do so but um, there's a lot of people out there um, talking about you know the sky's going to fall in, house prices are going to fall down. You've got to realise that there's more uh, you know players that are bigger than you and I in the marketplace. Uh, we've got the economy that's going to collapse, we've got um, the banks that will fail. Uh, if property prices drop more than 20 percent um, we're going to see uh, the banks go under. Right? If the banks can't, you know, operate as they are at the moment, mm. we can see that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of banks out there at the moment, which are um, there's a lot of banks out there which are not charging interest rates uh, due to the the corona and what's going out there. Um, and looking at, um, so I just got people messaging me and they're popping up in my screen. I'm trying to get them off the screen. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a there's a lot of um, larger plays at hand. So that's why we're going to see the more, even more stimulus packages coming through the market. We've got stimulus packages galore. I don't know what you've got there in New Zealand at the moment. Uh, here in Australia, we've got Job Keeper, Job Seeker, Job Maker, uh, Home Builder. Job Maker? Yeah, there is Job there Maker, is, yeah, I've for training. They pay you to train, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I've never got, heard of it, yeah. Uh, business grants, uh, cash bags, uh, tax, tax rebates, uh, 
uh, kickbacks galore. These are yeah, all things yeah, to try and stimulate yeah. the economy. The reason why I call penalty it... Penalty waiver. It, it's all yeah, 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 we don't have yeah. to pay penalty for if you yeah. you completed your tax return late. Okay, They yeah. waive the penalty. There's so many. Yeah. And these things here, like if they were to start giving all these incentives on a regular basis, we would... Uh, there'd be a lot of people calling out, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. you, you know, you're looking after the rich, you're looking after this, you're doing this. There'd be so many protests and all different stuff. Uh, but conveniently, because we've got... A, uh, a virus that's there, we can just mop the floor with this mm -hmm. virus, it's so bad, um, you know, we need to give away, you know, free money to all, don't even ask a question, oh yeah, let's put our mask on and say thank you to the Prime Minister and all that sort of stuff, so, yeah, with it, um, well, there's a lot of doomsayers out there, um, some of those people you're referring to um, do actually have some decent fundamentals, but I've watched them and they're totally off their head, um, some of these people, the most of them are just brooking um, precious metals and, and their own investment sort of philosophy. Um, but I think it's important to look at you know who they are. Even some of the very well respected people out there, they talk about when you know gold and silver prices go up through the roof, um, that they will uh, you know sell it off and purchase property. It's like why don't you buy property now, right? Debt becomes irrelevant with inflation. You can uh, pay off uh, the debt with today's debt with tomorrow's dollars. So. Um, with it um so yeah I, I i'm very cautious of who's giving that advice out there just be very careful at the moment uh, shri any thoughts on the stamp duty waiver starting from next week uh, as mentioned before and i think we're going to see a lot of uh you know new people entering the market due to the fact of the stimulus packages we're going to see a lot of builders and they're all, already the builders are out there jacking up the prices um, to try and profit from this um and you know it's just a free there's a market there that's being manipulated um, there's opportunities out there. So what's going to happen? What's going to prop this market up? There's so much uh, petrol that they're throwing into the market to stop it from uh, collapsing and it's just going to take off. So that's just my personal view. Um, uh, Christian, hello Rose. I'll get my clients to speak to you about taking up a loan. Awesome Christian. Thanks that's for Christian. Uh, Christian um, I don't know if you know. I think oh, okay. I don't, I don't so recognize I the name. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. my... Yeah. That's your, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tracy, uh, they are thinking of extending the wage subsidy. Here in Australia, they have just uh, announced that they will continue the wage subsidy, which is, here is called JobKeeper um, and JobSeeker. Uh, it was meant to end in September. Everyone thinks, oh, the sky's going to fall in. They have to keep this universal basic income alive. Mm -hmm. They're continuing on. They've just extended it for another six months, so which is pretty cool. Uh, Jake, do you believe the Home Builder grant will continue throughout the next year as currently ceases in December? Uh, I think it should be extended. Are they going to have to? Yeah. They're going to have to. Extend. I mean, it's so short span like. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it will be extended. Wishful thinking for myself. <laughs> Graham, if I get a job uh, overseas, UK or US, for example, is there any period I have to wait uh, before refinancing my Australian loans? I think uh, probably uh, they might require six months of it. Yep. Normally here in Australia, we can do three months, but yep. I think, I'm not very sure, but I think six months at least. Yeah. Cool. Um, Udaya, uh, is there a low doc? I can provide a counter declaration loan products that recognises foreign income from a sole mm, trader business. No. How the Citibank product loan you mentioned? No, there's no load up. Yeah. No load up. Yeah. Um, Stephen, uh, who are the winners and losers during hyperinflation, variable interest rate loans, or fixed interest rate loans if central banks' rates stay low? Uh, good question. I've never lived through a hyperinflation uh, from everything I've looked at. Uh, there was actually a post I made the other day, which was back in Germany in the 1920s. So it, the article read that some very smart businessmen and very uh, you know smart businessmen out there uh, went and actually purchased a lot of property using debt. I posted the link the other day, and I actually posted on my own personal Facebook and Instagram pages. Um, Talk about that they went out and bought property and then they paid the debt off with the inflated dollars in the future, right? Because you're taking today's debt and paying yeah. it out with inflated dollars. So uh, basically, you know, debt becomes irrelevant with inflation. A lot of people think that um, property prices 
uh, continuously go up. It's not the property prices that necessarily go up in value. Uh, most of the time it's that the dollar is losing its value and you need more dollars in order to purchase the same yeah. goods. So you, the, it's the currency that's dying. It's not the money that's going up. It's not the property that's going up. And that's a, once you get your head around that, it's a big paradigm change. Like That's when you go, shit, like debt is the asset. Um, and, you know, that, that's building a portfolio around that. So um, looking at who would be the winners from this cycle, um, debt is great. Savers will become losers. They're getting paid and taxed to hold their money. Uh, they're buying less and less on a regular basis. I uh, always talk about back in 2000, if you had $1,000, you could have bought an ice block uh, for 80 cents. You could have had 1,200 ice blocks. Um, we call them paddle pops here, little ice blocks. Uh, I don't know what you call them in New Zealand. Um, but yeah, you could have had 1,200 ice blocks. But for the same $1,000 now, um, whoops, we just lost our friends over here on uh, here um, on Insta. So um, so looking at um, if you had a, a $1,000 back in 2008, you could have bought 1,200 ice creams. Uh, here in 2020, uh, at $2.50 ice cream, you could buy about 400 ice cream. So you've lost uh, two thirds of your purchasing yeah. power with your currency. So yeah, looking at um, the other uh, questions, anyone here got any other further questions around finance for Rose? Any other thoughts you've had, Rose, regarding finance and lending for everyone this evening? Well, the bank's still there lending money, right? Yeah. It's it's not as if, like, look, the criteria may be, may be difficult, but there's always, there's always a lender there that can fit into your objectives and what fits into your needs, obviously, and the purpose of the loan. So yeah. we can always find a way. Yeah. Look, we, we will not, uh, with Zinga Finance, we try our very best to make sure that we can lend, you're able to borrow the money, but uh, we'll work, we'll wash, we workshop on it, like yeah. with the lender, with the BDMs, with, there's a group of us, there's a few brokers, uh, Zinga, there are brokers in Zinga that yeah. we know, uh, we do a lot of loans, so we, we, uh, we come across with that scenario. So yeah. basically, we get all the help there. There's always, yeah. there's always a way. Yeah. And, and we don't give up easily. Yeah. We don't give up easily. She does, and otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here with you. Yeah, no, no, we don't give up uh, easily. Yeah. I mean, as I said, like we get this loan that we've done been doing it for three days and we finally be able to package it. So I'm happy with that. Yeah. yeah. And looking at uh, the banks at the moment, like what is their appetite for overseas, uh, you know, um, purchases in Australia at the moment? What is their appetite just for general local Australian well, citizens. there, there, yeah. there is an appeal. There are banks that are really like can cater for it. I yeah. mean, I haven't had any problem. Yeah. Putting a loan for an expats. Yeah. No, we 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 do it all the time. Yeah. yeah. And how are the banks at the moment? Like, there's a. I know that the biggest problems that we're seeing at the moment with the banks, like, what's the turnaround times? How they. Oh yeah, that's the turnaround time, right? Some banks at the moment they're like. Gains it, for example, say 42 days, but then again, St. George used to be a long time, now they're back to two days. Mm -hmm. And then CBA now have 12 days, and then NAB is, yeah. But the, the, look, if it is for refinance, for example, where, where you don't need, you don't need, there's no purchase involved, mm -hmm. then we can take whichever lender. But if yeah. there's a purchase involved, that there is a settlement yeah. that needs to be satisfied, then yeah. we have to find a way to find a lender that can. Yeah. turn around quicker at the same time give you a better rate we negotiate rates all the time we always negotiate rates so to yeah. make sure it's comparable if we have to refinance most of the time i find like when i reviewing the portfolio you'll see it often that the properties they have currently are cross secured and i don't really like that because i mean why would you cross secure it? Yeah. so when we do if for example we have to to restructure your loan it could be that we may have to refinance it, or even if we stay with that bank, we make sure that you're not financially, uh, you know, it, it, we make sure that the, the refinance is to your favorable to you. Yeah. yeah. And the question um, here from Tracy again, are second tier lenders an option if mainstream bank says no, are the rates competitive? 
With the expats, right, uh, we have second year lender like Crazy Mac. They're yeah. pretty good, right? But I do not know if they cater for for expats. Yeah. Most uh, mostly with expats, they have to be the big with a big, big four, four lenders. Yeah. 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 Or an international bank like Citibank. So Citibank yeah. does. Yes. Yeah. Um, Chris just said, uh, I just secured an underpriced duplex in Cairns on low dock loan at 6.3%. Feels way too high, but the only way I could get it. Uh, get the property with my serviceability and current debt. I'll dump another 60k in, in six months so I can refinance the deal with 40% deposit and no change in income. So I'll trade hopefully at a much better rate. Question is, am I still in for getting uh, the low doc loan or would you do something similar to secure a property uh, that's at least 50 grand below market value? Um, I guess looking at what's the property going to do uh, for your position uh, mm -hmm. when purchasing a property. I always question myself as to uh, how am I going to benefit from buying the property? How is the property going to help me um, get to my goals? What's the longer term goal? How does it fit in for the overall strategy? Um, you know, is it, um, yeah, with it, you know, is it uh, going to, you know, give me good cash flow so I can, you know, build the rest mm -hmm. of my portfolio? Is it going to give me equity that I need for building the rest of my portfolio? Um, as for, you know, is, you know, getting it with a, a low doc loan stupid or not? Um, I guess if it's going to help you reach your goals, then you know, and it's in line, and you've 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 assessed all aspects of it, um, then you know, taking it up could be an option. Um, you know, I've bought properties with all different uh, interest rates. Six point three um, is certainly not the highest rates that I've had over the years. I've had much higher, um, and I'm happy to you know do those sort of deals um, if that. You know, is what is required, but obviously, if you can get a cheaper interest rate and you can get just a full doc loan or, or get a different lender that could give you a cheaper rate, uh, there definitely are cheaper rates out there. What are some sort of average rates in the market at the moment, right? It's just for normal full doc loans, for normal full doc, uh, yeah. we can do there is a 2.29, 2.19, yeah. uh, yeah. you know, and uh, for, what about for investment for investment PI, uh, principal yeah. and interest? We yeah. could probably get 2.76, okay. 2.79. Okay. And then you can get 3.13 or 3.15 for interest only. Yeah. yeah, There are a lot of, it depends, sometimes we can negotiate a better rate for you. It depends on the volume of the loan, right? Yeah. Sometimes uh, if we have, if your loan is around 1.5, definitely you can get a 2% discount off the standard variable or 2.10. Yeah. 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 And I think, um, you know, if we look at a position of someone recently, you know the person I'm talking about when I say this, yeah. um, that did a refinance of their position and was able to go from about negative 50, they saved about $50,000 yeah, yeah. yes, a year yes, from yes, doing yes. the restructure. So, mm -hmm. um, and that, so basically we had a, a client recently which had a large sort of size portfolio, a few million dollars worth of debt, mm -hmm. maybe four million worth of debt. I don't know exactly what the position was from memory, but it was about forty grand a year, uh, four four million dollars worth of debt. They were able to save about fifty thousand dollars a year on restructuring their debt. Yeah. When the bank now re looks at their position, they've got better servicing because their rates mm -hmm. are lower, and then they can you know obviously go out and rebuild their portfolio. Yeah. So sometimes it can be just a matter of. I always talk about having a debt strategy. Uh, debt strategy is to overview the position and go, okay, how is this loan going to affect me and how is the loan going to benefit me, not just today as I'm buying the property, but three years down the track, five years down the track, 10 years down the track, 50 years down the track, right? Um, a lot of these loans are 30 year loans. So when setting up the loan, it's important to understand if you're stuck with this product for the next 30 years, how's it going to help you in the long term uh, you know, sort of view of things? Um, if you're restructuring your whole portfolio just to get one deal across the line, it may not be worthwhile sort of doing that deal if it's going to put you in a clutch looking forward um, with having a, a bad debt strategy. So uh, Rose and the team specialize in you know building the debt strategy for accumulating debt and the consolidation phase of things as well. There are a lot of things that when we do restruct, when we look at your loan, right? When I review your loan and I always look at like what's your current rate, how is it the loan structured and how we can service this loan on how it's going to be like moving forward, mm -hmm. how much can you borrow? Yeah. Now if for example your loan with certain lender is already like past the 5% interest only, you're going to principal and interest repayment then we will ask you is a you know, cash flow may not be there, and for for investment purposes, we may you know you would like to retain an interest-only repayment. Then we look at that as well. We will consider that. So, 
there's a lot of options there in terms of how you can maximize the equity of your property, your service, uh, service servicing level, mm -hmm. and moving forward, how much, how much can you still borrow? Yeah. So, yeah. it's Have it's it's not like when when we review your 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 loan we also look at like uh, through the interview that we have with you as to you know we have to fit into what your needs are mm -hmm. and also what are you know what are the objectives are you going to yeah. purchase more properties so yeah. those are things that we do consider awesome and then uh, Idea asked unrelated to the topic is now a good time to convert uh, variable loans to a fixed rate loan um, we can't give that sort advice, of financial yeah. advice, um, but you know, I like to push boundaries. Uh, so looking at my own personal position, I'm not fixing any of my loans because I expect interest rates to go down lower in the future. Um, interest rates are very, very cheap at the moment. Uh, if you fix yourself for two years at 2%, uh, we have people coming in a lot of the time at the moment which bought a property two years ago uh, and fix the interest rate and they're like, I'm stuck for another year, but I'm paying 4% and I could have got it for 2% now. Will you be regretting this in the future? So a lot of the banks have uh, have fixed interest rates much lower than what the current variable mm. rates are, uh, which would only indicate that if they're going to take a bet against you, that, you know, there's a good chance they're going to come down as well. So uh, we can't give you that answer. Um, if yes, for two or three years, um, what you've got to remember is that when you do tr uh, fix your loan, if you go to sell the property off or restructure that debt in any way, shape or form, um, you'll be up for break fees, which would be yes. the difference between the income yeah, yeah. and the, the, mm. the interest rate and what the current rate is at the time, um, which could be in the five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand mm. dollars price range. Any feedback for you, Rose, on that? With a fixed rate, I think yeah. uh, when people, when investors or people ask me like, um, why is it is it a good time to fix? And I always say like, what is your tolerance to risk, right? Yeah. Then you can probably look at like, like say for example, look. I'm just meeting my commitments in the moment, and if I'm going, if this interest rate is gonna go up, what's the impact yeah. economically on you? So, yeah, you be able to tell that yourself. Yeah, yeah. If you don't know from protection, you don't know what could change, and you feel like you're riding on the edge, then mm -hmm. you know it, it could be more beneficial to fix them. Yeah. Um, but yeah. for me personally, I'm I'm not fixing uh, at this point. We find it difficult if you're a professional investor, is right? If you have a fixed rate. It's just so we stuck with that same example that property has the equity and yep. in fix we can always stop up that loan from that but then again if there is a problem with the servicing we can't even yep. we can't play around with that property in terms of the equity yep. the servicing so we get stuck with that so, yeah, so it might limit your uh, if you are with one lender yeah and you want to let's say for instance you're with a and z and you want to pull out equity a and z says no you can't pull out equity but you go to CBA and CBA says to you, look, we can pull out a hundred grand worth of equity. Um, you can't just take that loan straight to CBA. You might have to pay a break fee, which could be yes. quite considerable, yeah. and it may not be un may be unfeasible uh, to do so. So you need to look at the whole uh, spectrum of your portfolio and, and how it's going to perform for you in the longer term. And, and that's what I was talking about beforehand, having a a debt strategy, a consolidation mm -hmm. phase, and the accumulation phase as well as consolidation phase. So. Um, uh, Joel asks, uh, I have a minimal income, however, I have a lot of money in my house equity. Is there any way for me to get a loan on an investment property that is totally serviced by the rent, similar to how you can get a lease stock loan on commercial assets? So, Well, it's all about servicing, right? Like, uh, you have to remember, even if it's positively geared, the bank can only look at 80% or 70% of that rental. Yeah. So okay. it's not like, yeah. Yeah. Cool. And sometimes if it, if it is uh, heavily reliant on rent, the bank tend to shy away with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And um, I haven't had many questions from Instagram this evening. Um, I see that we're sort of running out of questions from everyone uh, this yeah. evening. Uh, Denisha says that we're looking sharp, so that's good. Oh, Thanks, thank Denisha. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, with it, um, if there's any further questions from anyone, whether you're here from Australia watching this evening or whether you have tuned in from uh, New Zealand watching from abroad, um, yeah, uh, feel free to ask questions forward. Uh, Tracy asked one other question here, what is, you, what is your opinion on the one bank trap? So I guess uh, what, what is Tracy, the one bank trap? 
I guess what Tracy's trying to say is like having all your loans with one lender and having the risk with that one lender if they do something to you or should you have, if you've got 10 properties, should it be 10 different banks or should No, it, no. no. We normally put them some most, with, for me, I believe in one lender, we saturize it there because only because we can get a better discount, the volume. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's I'll, never been a problem with having in... Uh, your, the, you know? There's a thing called an all monies clause, which could be um, uh, where people, uh, where the bank could actually call all your loans in, even if you're paying them or, Mostly or not. Mostly commercial but, lending yeah. do, do that, but yeah. they don't raise this. Uh, it, it's, it's something that um, looking at, for, for me personally, is something that Rose has uh, told me like 15 years ago. On yeah, yeah, let's, when you get let's use one bank. saturation, yeah. Just use one bank. Yeah. Once we finish that bank, then we go to the next bank. If they keep saying yes to giving a loan, take the loan. Start yeah. with the best banks. Uh, the big four are generally the bigger mm -hmm. banks here in Australia. Uh, once you've uh, you know exhausted the, the, say the first bank, go to the second bank. Once you've exhausted the second bank, go to the third bank and so on and so forth. So that's what... Uh, I've personally done, it's worked well for me, uh, but obviously no financial advice on that front. Uh, Chris uh, said here, he said he's bought a, um, <laughs> um, you don't have the highest interest rate, Chris. Uh, there's certainly a lot higher interest rates than 6.3%. Um, your numbers on it sound good. That's like sort of a 10% yield that you've got there. Um, I'd be interested to in hearing more about how those numbers stack up. I do manage properties up in Cairns, so if you need help on managing some of those properties, um, yeah, feel free to reach out as well. Uh, Luke asked, is it possible to draw out equity to live off on Australian houses? Um, if you're a resident in New Zealand, what LVR is required and does the interest rate change at all? So maybe if you want to answer that one, Rose, for Luke. Sorry. So it is, is it possible to draw out equity to live off on Australian houses, if you're a resident in New Zealand, so if you're in a, if you're yeah, in New yeah, Zealand, yeah, 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 yeah. No, every time we draw equity from the the bank would always ask the purpose of that property, right? The purpose of the of drawing the equity. No, if, if it is for living expenses, I can't really put that as a purpose because you must be experiencing yeah. hardship to draw equity for your living living costs. So. Every every time we we um, put a loan in there, we have to make sure that you know what is the purpose. If you're you know if you're harvesting some equities or yeah. you know y you need to account for all the money that is released by the bank. So uh, many years ago, there was a few property spruikers out there that were talking about buying a, a property, watching for the equity to go up, and then pulling that equity out to live on. So it's called living on equity. Yeah, yeah. It's like such a bad flawed model. So for yeah. Myself personally, I've always looked at buying properties that are going to put cash flow in your pocket each week, um, not necessarily um, ones that you can pull the equity out. So yeah, like. But how do you pay off the loan then? You just don't. That's what these people yeah. spruik. So it was a spruiking thing from yeah. back in the early two uh, thousands where uh, people were touting, you know, live off equity, buy a property, wait for it to go up two hundred grand, pull out a hundred grand equity, mm. and keep living off. But it's a flawed model. It doesn't work. So. Um, you know, I think it's very important for when building a property portfolio, you're building it strategically, uh, you're structuring it correctly, you're building it where you've got positive cash flow coming through so you can live on the rents and not from uh, expansion of the property value. So um, that, that could be what Luke is referring to. But if yeah. you are just looking at pulling out uh, equity in order to purchase other assets, uh, I'm assuming mm. it would be no different. Would that be right? If, say, if someone buys a property for 200, it goes to 400, you're pulling out. 80% of the 200 grand, would you be able to use that if you're a New Zealander to buy more property in Australia? Yeah, you, you can. Yeah. As long as the purpose is defined, uh, the, the, the uh, harvesting the equity must be must have a purpose, right? It can be an investment. You could purchase property in New Zealand or wherever yeah. you want to purchase, but we have to substantiate that as well in yeah. terms of like you can't just select a yeah. future property investment. Yeah. Sometimes the bank wants to know like or oh, do you have a copy of the contract of sale now yeah and sometimes what we'll buy property strategically like you can pick up little cheapies that mm. a purchase for like 50 or 80 grand that rent for 200 250 mm. a week and these things if you're buying them cash it can also help with that cash flow going for your into servicing. servicing yeah so we've had a lot of investors that have been stuck mm. and they may not be able to service but if they buy a little property that's cheap for cash they can use that uh, cash flow as extra earned income yeah. 
to boost up their servicing position to obviously go on yeah. and acquire more property. So uh, Matt said thanks Zinger, sent his loan docs off today. So uh, Who's thanks Matt? for Matt here. I don't want don't like oh, okay, this sorry. Yep. And stuff. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Simon, I was looking at Google Maps in New South Wales and stumbled across stumbled across Birch Grove. Please tell me you own something there. No, it's an expensive area. And it's not an area that I would invest. Um, um, yeah, that, that, that I'd invest in personally. Uh, Daniel, is there a time when housing in Australia will crash? What will be the indicators? Uh, good question. Um, I personally think that um, there will possibly be. Um, if we look at the market uh, where times have crashed, uh, there has constantly been crashes over the course of the last uh, 20 years in the property market that I've been investing into it. So if we look at the Sydney market in 2003, 2004, the market peaked. Um, the areas that I was looking at where I bought my first property, which was Western Sydney, um, the properties were selling for 300000 The market crashed all the way down to about 200000 at the bottom of the market, so from peak to trough. It lost about 30% of the value at that point in time. It took, uh, so in 2003, 300 grand, 2007, 2008, the market had gotten down just pre-GFC uh, to about 200 grand. When the GFC came through with all the stimulus packages that went in, the market got back up to about 300,000 in around 2010. So about two years after the crash, the market picked back up. Um, and then from 2010 to 2016, the market doubled. Those properties are now about 600 grand. Uh, in the point in 2017, the market uh, stepped off and crashed in Sydney and went down to about 2019 and the market took off again. So if we look at just the Sydney market, the, the holy grail of Australia, the bluest chip economy in Australia, um, the market has crashed multiple times. If we look at during those times, uh, when the market in Sydney crashed, Gold Coast and Brisbane was booming in 2004 to 2010. Um, and you know there's been lots of mining booms. Those markets have been crashing over the course of the last five years, and only now they've been picking up over the course of the last sort of 12 months. So um, there is crashes that happen in the market, and when I say crashes, I mean like 20% reductions in prices. But generally, it becomes sort of people don't look at it. Like in mm. 12 months' time, they're like, oh, you know, we've lost some money, lost a little bit of money, but it's only until the day's come and gone and you look at it statistically that you can see that there was a very uh, big gouge. And what I try to prognosticate is looking at the markets and trying to see before that impact happens, what will occur and how you can sort of navigate, benefit from it and uh, position yourself to be able to capitalise on the, the best. And um, yeah, very, very uh, common um, for there to be crashes in the market. Um, to say that there's some spruikers out there that go out there and say that the sky's going to fall in, um, all these professors and experts and all that. Um, I've had some run-ins with them over the years as well. Um, they always get it wrong. Uh, they're always out there trying to sell you a book, sell you their wares, whatever the case may be, and generally they're miserable sort of people with no assets either. So, um, yeah, you've got to look at you know all factors and every vantage point in the market from where the banks are going to be sitting, what they have to do to protect themselves, and, and so on and so forth. Um, Jonathan, uh, have you got any events planned uh, for when we can visit? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, this year I've just been really, really busy trying to help people, um, uh, you know, in, in business. So I've had a lot of uh, people getting themselves uh, into a good position, a lot of people that were like, I should have listened to you before the GFD occurred. Uh, and fixed up my super fund. Got a lot of people here that are saying that they wish they could have capitalised on the market. A lot of people are saying they wish they had have set their loans up correctly beforehand. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that are going on out there. I haven't had a chance to do any events. I've been trying to pump out the, the Facebook Lives, but for sure, Jonathan, when you come to Sydney, we'll go out and have a feed and have a drink when you get to Sydney next, when they open up for you guys to come here. Jonathan's got a really amazing story. Um, himself. Maybe we should get a, a Zoom call with him one day if you want, Jonathan, um, and we can do a bit of a Zoom call on here and uh, chat to everyone about you know what you've been up to. If, you, if you'd like, let me know, uh, but you've got a really cool story um, and it, it's motivating to hear that people... It would be good to are, share. Yeah, like he's, he's been following and, and watching. He's done some really cool stuff over in NZ and mm. yeah, it's been, it's been cool to see him grow. Uh, Dean, uh, one of the of the major banks, do you see one better to work with uh, as far as borrowing against equity in the existing property? Is there any banks? 
We don't really have any particular bank that we could pick up other are better than the other bank. It's uh, always like one, we look at the valuation as well. Yeah. One bank can be a better valuation and yet we couldn't service in that particular lender. Yeah. So no particular, you know, with the main with, with the main bank, we couldn't pick up like, oh, ANZ is better, or CBA is better, or St. George is better. Mm -hmm. No, we're always gonna look at what benefits you most. Yeah. And all those lenders can fit, you know, it might not it might not fit in because you cannot yeah. service or valuation is not there yeah. or the service level maybe yeah yes so and some some people don't want that bank like emotionally is yeah. it find me another bank except for that bank so yeah. whoever's going to give me the money i'll take their money from the bank yeah. so uh Udaya wrote uh, are you still buying properties despite you saying you're hoping for a market crash can you kindly explain it's contradicting what you were saying said and doing uh, good question. Um, just to clarify, I wish that house prices would fall. Right, a lot of people are like, you know, a house price is going to fall. They're not. They're not falling. They're not going to fall. Um, if they were going to fall, I would sell properties off if I was that scared. Uh, if they're going to go up, I'd be buying properties. I'm buying properties. I wish they would fall. Even though I own properties, if they fell, I'd be able to go in and get properties on the cheap. I always want properties to fall. I don't even want them to go up because I'm a long-term buy and hold strategy uh, is, is what my strategy is. Um, so yeah, for me saying that I want them to fall, I'm the biggest fan for them to fall. I want them to fall, right? It gives me more opportunity to pick up, uh, you know, before we see hyperinflation, before we see the debt that they're holding, that we're going to be holding with becomes worthless. So yeah, looking at it, um, sometimes when I say things that may sound contradicting in my head, they don't sound that way, um, but when I say them, they may sound it. So just to be clear, uh, I wish they would fall down, but they're not falling down. I am buying, I've bought every year, um, you know, since I've been able to sign a contract at the age of 18, uh, I've bought about eight properties this year, uh, mm -hmm. settling on one tomorrow. Yeah, Rose that's a big one. Yeah. That's a big one. Um, Rose is about to do a loan for another one at the moment, mm -hmm. which is uh, the one near the water. Yes, so yeah. Looking at. Um, so yeah, I'm still buying as much as I can and I'm seeing the market. I'm trying to frantically get my hands onto as much mm -hmm. stock as I can because the prices are going up a lot um, in, 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 in Australia. Uh, Steve, we have a tenant wanting to build a shed in the backyard of a property at their cost. Could that add value to the property or would the reduced backyard space diminish the value? Um, so that's the interesting one. If they're going to the, pay the, for the, it. The, yeah, but the valuation of the property, right? You might have multi, multiple dwellings, right? Yeah. The multiple dwellings is not, the value of the multiple dwelling is not as much as two dwellings in a separate title. Separate title, yeah. 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 So, and some lender, for example, ANZ, if it is a multiple dwelling, they're only going to lend 70%. Steve's just saying they want to build a shed, the tenant. If they're oh, going to build a shed. A shed. Is it? They're just going to build a shed. So yeah. if they're going to build a shed, let them build a shed. If you don't like it, just get them to remove it and, and, mm -hmm. and get them to but remove it. But you were saying, cost. would it add value? Yeah, and would what it add value? What sort of shed is it? Maybe like a Stratco shed, a little tin shed or a Stratco. whatever. Yeah. You'll have one of those little metal sheds that you put in for lawn mowers. planes like? Oh, you, if it's under 25 approved? square metres, I don't think you need approval. I don't think I don't think it will add value because the bank would always ask, like, is it an approved, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Chris, good work, good work, mate. Um, yeah, um, th thanks for looking after the air cons up there. Um, uh, Chris, with the uh, properties in Cairns, he, he, he does air cons in Cairns for our properties up here. Mm -hmm. um, Luke, uh, would you appreciate? Would appreciate if Rose could get back to me in regards to my loan structures for my investment properties. So, so Luke, Luke here. I don't want to say his last name here. Okay, Rose, will, Rose will get. I'll put it down for you and make sure that Rose gets back to you tomorrow. Uh, gives you buzz. Um, is uh, Stephen? Yeah. Is credit utilization a big deal in Australia compared to the US in regards to credit cards? If I use more than 30% of a bail or balance uh, and paid off showing, will that affect my potential credit rating? What, the credit card? Yeah, if you have a credit card in America, in the US, yeah. um, 
So I'll read it again. Is credit utilization a big deal in Australia compared to in the US where regards to credit cards, if I use more than 30% of the available balance paid the credit, off? The credit card, you don't look at how much you've used. They look at the limit. Because yeah. potentially you can use the whole limits, right? If you get a limit of 10,000 versus a limit of 5,000, obviously the bank would set, say, 3.5% of that. You already have a commitment of $300 a month. Yeah. So credit cards. So we always say to the client, if you don't use a credit card, cancel it. And with, um, I believe that in the US, um, when they do the lending, that actual credit, if you have a credit card, it's better for your credit file. So it's like a bit of a reverse thing. So I think that's where. Yeah, but there comes a time when they, you know, I think probably they want to know the, the person, they want to have a, some a credit products, but yeah. not necessarily like it would, it, I don't know what the US do, but here, it, yeah. it, there is an impact on your credit assessment. Yeah, cool. Cool. Um, Claude asked, uh, this is a really good question from Claude, and uh, Nathan, do you pay down your properties with excess cash? So if I have cash, let's say that mm -hmm. you know, I've got a hundred grand, um, would I pay that hundred thousand dollars off a property? Um, personally, no, I, I don't like paying off my debts. My properties are all principal and interest nowadays. Uh, I wish they were interest only, but mm -hmm. they're all principal and interest, so they do pay themselves down. However, if I had a hundred thousand dollars, the question I would be asking myself, is that paying that off a loan, which is charging me 2%, 3% interest, that 100 grand is going to be, you know, two grand a year. Who cares about the two grand a year? With $100,000, could I be generating a better return? That's the question yeah. I ask, right? And for me, yes, right? I could go and buy a property for $100,000, rents for $250 per week, and buy that cash rather than putting it into the loan. Then I've got a new asset that's rising in value. Uh, plus the rental income is going to pay that cost of the credit to hold it, as well as being able to give me a profit, uh, which is positive cash flow in my pocket. So I always uh, pose the question to people is if they're thinking about paying down their debt, uh, you know, it's a personal question, it's, you know, it's not a financial advice question that I'm going to answer, but ask yourself, can you get a better return than the interest that you're going to be saving? And with interest rates at zero, uh, with inflation that's going to ravage the country and the world, uh, for a better question, um, you know, I'd rather have more assets that are going to increase in value and be hyperinflated away rather than paying down some debt which is going to become worthless. Um, I've done a lot of videos using different currencies and uh, I did one recently with the um, with the Hungarian uh, Pengo, which is a, a currency which died of a hyperinflation going back in the 1940s. Uh, back in the 1920s, $50, mm -hmm. 50 Pengo note people had in their wallet. Then it went to a one milliard, which is a thousand million, which is a billion dollars within a period of 20 years. So imagine walking around with 50 bucks today and that same $50 note, you walk around with a billion dollar note in you know, 10, 20 years time and you being able to only pay what you could buy for $50 today. Why would you want to pay the debt off is the question I ask myself. So um, that is my thoughts on that. Uh, Kabir is online. Uh, Kabir is one of our uh, yeah. brokers here. And I saw Denisha there beforehand. So uh, give a big shout out to them um, if they're your broker. Um, uh, Luke, do any Australian lenders waive the LMI on over 90% of LVR loans, interest only for Kiwi borrowers? What about mm -hmm. chartered accountants? So if you're an accountant in New Zealand, you need to get the professional the services. Yeah. yeah, I haven't, look, that's a, I will ask that, uh, that thing because I haven't really come across with yeah. uh, a waiver. Of, you're, you're a chartered accountant, right? Yeah. Yeah, Lenders, okay, I'll ask the question. Yeah. yeah, I know because you can that's have a, a 90% one. LV. That's a good one. So if yeah. you're a doctor, yeah. you're a lawyer, you're an accountant, uh, yeah. you're a professional Medical services, professions, yeah. um, you know, you can get a lower deposit into a loan for those of you no that don't want to with yeah. no mortgage yeah. insurance. Yeah. Um, as for that occurring for uh, New Zealand residents, unsure. So um, I'll find out for you. Yeah. If, it might be a good question, Luke, if you want to uh, flick over an email. Uh, I don't have a little slide thing across here. Rose, how will people find you? Rose at zingerfinance.com.au Rose at zingerfinance.com.au uh, If you've got questions for Rose, send her an email. Yeah. Um, if you uh, want to get in contact, flick us a message uh, in Messenger on whatever platform you're on. Um, flick us an email at is it info at Zinger Finance just for the general yeah, team. Yeah. If you if you want the team, info at Zinger Finance. If it's to Rose personally, Rose at Zinger Finance dot com dot au. 
Um, Chris, uh, you should hear Jonathan's story. He came from the slums to become a multimillionaire with seven properties, business that makes millions, millions every year. He still has the first dollar he ever made. You should interview him. Awesome. Uh, happy to have a have you online. Always good to see other people's stories. Actually, I should extend that to everybody, right? Like if you guys yeah. want to come on and share your story and have a chat, like maybe we could do that once a month or once a fortnight or something like that and have some of you on. I don't know how to use Zoom calls and all that sort of stuff. I just go straight into Facebook and Instagram and make these videos. But I'm sure we'll be able to work it out where we could talk and, and maybe have an interview about you know your journey, your story, your background and, yeah. and share you know everybody else's uh, successes out there to be able to see what other people are doing sort of in their you know relatively space and you know, my strategies work for me but it's not necessarily for everyone as well um you know there's lots of other people with different stories different strategies different positions so would um would be very open to that if you want to flick us a message that'd be cool um ranny uh, wrote rosa nathan always loving your weekly sessions about the market and property investors i wanted to know what is your opinion on the status of the people working from home is it going to be affect the house prices outside cbd offices now that people can work from anywhere like here in melbourne cbd ghost home and areas having plenty of auctions core logic nationally uh, mortgage activity is up three percent for the week ending 26th of july very interesting to see that occur uh, what I'm seeing out there, like I purchased more properties than probably anyone out there in the country when it comes to commercial quantity, uh, pick up sort of like 100 properties a month uh, for, for people and uh, speak with agents, speak to thousands of them uh, in a month or in, you know, in a year. Just, I don't even know how many I speak to. I have a list actually of 27,000 real estate agents that I deal with on a regular basis um, with communications and whatnot. Um, and with uh, the agents, what I'm hearing is that people are buying farmland and agricultural land yeah. and, uh, you know, people are relocating to interstate. So a lot of people at the moment are moving to uh, Gold Coast and, and Brisbane because of affordability, lifestyle, all those sorts of things. Sea so change. Yeah. Sea change. So um, I think a lot of people will change the way that they live their life prior to all this scandemic that's out there. Uh, people, <laughs> people. I can't say the word with the C, it's and then, and I can't say that word yeah. with the nineteen number. I can't say. Yeah. I can't say. It. Um, but yeah, with I think we're going to see uh, people changing their lifestyles uh, due to this. So are you going to say something? Rose, or no, I'm just laughing? a funny scandemic. Yeah, it's a scam. Um, uh, <laughs> Let's chat, guys. Let's chat. I'm replying here to Chris and Jonathan. Um, Steve, just a garden shed. Uh, cool. Yeah, look, they're going to put a garden shed in. It's not going to cost you anything. It could add some value. I don't think it's going to be massive value. You're not going to get a valuation with 20 grand, ex uh, you know, no. extra. But it's good to have it there as utility. Um, it will save you having to put one in. Uh, if you don't like it in the future, you can throw it out. You can take a photo of it, put it on the Facebook marketplace and sell it to someone else mm -hmm. for 500 bucks mm -hmm. when they move out. So... Uh, Pedro, good, just good content. Thanks for today's chat. It was a pleasure. Would appreciate if one of you finance could call me whenever they can. Keep up the good work. You're a legend, Pedro. I did speak to Kabir beforehand. Um, haven't had a chance to text you back. Um, I'll make sure that he gives you a buzz over the course of the next sort of 24 hours. So if you can put a little note there for Pedro. for Pedro, yep. Um, uh, we've just bought another Tracy. We've just bought another investment property. Asked the bank if we can borrow more to buy another before Christmas. And the bank's eyes on one of the and the bank size one of the biggest hurdles of spending habits is flash cars, shoes, and buying stupid shit. Can you maybe share with everybody what the banks are looking at? So like Uber Eats and all the bad things. Oh, the bank, their expenses. The expenses, yeah. <laughs> so when applying for a loan, what could be a big issue there? See, what the bank was uh, normally they look at. We need to provide three months of your savings statement, right? They can read all the uh, transactions there, the the expenditure, yeah. even the uh, your commitment. And then versus what we have declared, mm -hmm. and that's why we with Zinga we also look at that, make sure that your 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 expenses tallies with the with yeah. your, you know. What what you're declaring yeah. to the bank and that yeah. So, so sometimes if if you're declaring below what the bank's threshold is, they tend to more scrutinize it and. If your expenses is higher than what the bank has uh, benchmarked, then they'll pick up the expenses, the actual expenses that you have. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. And um, yeah, with it, um, yeah, uh, that, that's really important. I'm just reading yeah. a few messages here as well from Instagram for some of the folks over there. 
Um, so yeah, with it, just be very careful of your expenses. Uh, people that are out there, you know, partying, getting their money out of the ATM mm-hmm. at the pub, they're down there, the banks will look at that, that you're slapping on the pokies, pissing up on the booze, those sorts of things are going to be detrimental to your uh, to your servicing. So just be very careful of what you're spending your money on. Um, and um, uh, Denisha just put in the message box. Uh, Denisha is one of our uh, brokers here at Zinger Finance. Uh, how you can actually reach out to the team and to, to Rose. So if you do want to uh, write down those um, those email addresses, uh, if you want to reach out. Um, uh, Justin is said here he's keen to share his story. So um, oh. let's maybe Justin, if you can flick a, a, a message over just to remind for us to organise something. So if you do want to share your story, hop in the video. Um, happy to have a chat, Justin. And I know that you've got a, a business as well. That's um, you know you're a builder in, in Northern Territory. So I give a bit of a shout out there if someone's looking to build in the Northern mm-hmm. Territory. Uh, Justin has a large. Uh, building company up there, very large building company. So, um, you know, I'd love to interview you on that. I've never thought about it beforehand, but you guys here this evening have given me the idea to, you know, share your story. So let's uh, let's organise that. Um, did have some questions on Instagram. One was about a phone bill. Um, so uh, there was a uh, someone's finding it difficult. The way that phones mm-hmm. set up, I can't really get back to it. Um, is um, the way that they got a, a a phone bill on their credit file and it's uh, difficult. Phone, yeah. yeah, how do we get around that? Bank, if it is no more than five hundred dollars, yeah, the bank would you know would consider your application. But uh, yeah. t- telco is very it's very common. Yeah, cool. Um, sorry, I just had something pop up here on the screen. Um, Lee, uh, where does Zinger come from? Same as the Zinger Burger, hot as hell. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Um, actually, it came from many years ago. I was talking to uh, Is one this of... when you used to go and buy Zinger? No, no. I was, talking to my... <laughs> I was actually talking to one of my Indian mates back in the day. And he was a, a finance guy and he worked for us. And um, he was he was like, this deal's very hot. It's too hot for an Indian. And then we we're talking about the Zinger Burger. There was an ad that was about mm-hmm. a Zinger Burger. And he goes, yeah, the friggin' Zinger, right? Mm-hmm. And then we always referred to a deal like a deal that's um, very hot uh, that you can pull your equity from. So yeah. if you can purchase a property, pull your equity out mm-hmm. within quick succession of buying the property, would class that deal as a Zinger deal because you'd be getting a deal where you can mm-hmm. get your equity out quick smart and um, ever since we did that, we are just referring to a deal as being a Zinger deal. And then um, when I set up the, the finance company, uh, we're like, what do we call the company? We're throwing around all these silly names years ago that were just very generic. And I was like, why don't we call it Zinger? And it's like, no, it's a stupid name, it's crap. And it's like, well, getting the URLs for a business is important and all that sort of stuff. And we could get the whole mm-hmm. uh, package. And what we stand for is finding those deals that are, you know, that are Zinger deals. Zinger deals are ones where we can pull the equity out of, be able to build the property portfolio quite well from. So that's where that uh, came from. So it did kind of come from there, but it wasn't really. It was just a bit of a broken English and a, and a, a good old bit of banter and it turned into something uh, of where we are today. Um, question about, is the Brisbane market still going to heat up? Uh, Brisbane market is very good. Uh, the, the market is heating up a lot. There's a lot less stock in the market. All the stock in Brisbane that's sort of under the 250, 300 grand price range is disappearing. Um, I'm still picking up properties for 140, 150 grand, but they are becoming much, much harder to get our hands on to. Um, the prices are moving a lot up there and we are in the very early stages of a property boom. So yes, I am calling a property boom in Brisbane, property boom in Sydney, property boom in many other states, which I will not go into because that's for my uh, investor, uh, like my, my uh, inner circle sort of clients where uh, I run my office like a family office and I help people locate and negotiate uh, deals. And um, yeah, I, I give all that IP to my investors. Um, uh, Claudia, uh, is this second session recorded? I missed the beginning. Uh, yes, Claudia, this will be saved on uh, on Facebook and on Instagram and be broadcast later onto YouTube. So you can revert back to this video a little bit later. And uh, if you do like what we do, if you could hit up the like button, share it with your mates, tag them in if you feel that you've got good value from these uh, from these sessions. Uh, Michael just said, thanks for the info. Brilliant, Luke. Uh, hi Rose, are you seeing any delays in the bank's processing loans? I hear ANZ is very slow due yes. to the 
offshore teams and the word which we shall not mention with the the disease. Um, uh, there, yeah. there are like St. George that turn around is two days. Yeah. And then we have uh, we have uh, Commonwealth Bank. I think it's twelve days. Yeah. So some banks then they get are 40, yeah. forty-two days. Some banks are forty-two days. ANZ said for forty hours. Is it, yeah. for, is it slow? Very, forty-two yeah, days. Yeah. Forty-two so days. Yeah. If we we're in lockdown in a certain country, right? You guys in New Zealand have been in lockdown. You. Prime Minister or whatever she's called, uh, puts you in a lockdown. This isn't just happening in your own neighbourhood around the world. Mm. Um, this is happening in Manila in the Philippines. There's lockdowns. Uh, I was told only about two weeks ago that India, uh, Bangalore in India, where a lot of the uh, processing for the loans occurs, mm. the banks are offshoring their teams. And these areas are hotspots and they're uh, being put in a lockdown. So the, the, they're working on skeleton staff mm. and... Um, yeah, things are a lot slower out there, so just to be aware of. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Jonathan, how much would you sell me your cash flow number plates? Uh, I wouldn't sell the cash flow number plates. I always said that if someone offered me even 100 grand, I wouldn't sell them. Um, but yeah, uh, just about uh, borrow off our equity off our house uh, in Cairns we built last year and buy another house. Would you recommend buying in Cairns again or in Brisbane? I'm more of a big fan for capital cities. Uh, I do own in Cairns. Uh, the stuff that I've bought in Cairns has been much of the cheaper stuff. Um, you know, cheapest probably I bought in Cairns was twenty thousand dollars back in the day. Those things are now selling for eighty, ninety thousand. Um, probably the most expensive one. It's been probably about a hundred grand that I bought in Cairns just buying the little cheapy uh, properties. I'm not a big fan because it's a, a capital city. If I'm going to spend two hundred grand or three hundred grand, I'd rather buy in Sydney. Or in Brisbane or, or whatnot, but if if you'd like, Ken, um, flick us a message. Happy to have a chat to you about you know strategy and you know what could work. And the property has to fit in line with the overall goals. The finance has to fit in line with the overall goals. Um, the importance of having you know the the deal and the finance working together is that you could find the hottest deal ever. Um, and if you can't get the finance, then you can't do the deal. Um, and the same thing applies vice versa. So. Um, yeah, happy to have a chat to you on that front. <laughs> this is thing that cash flow is hard. Uh, bring back those jobs to Australia. Look, it's interesting. It's just interesting out there. Um, all good. I hope the same with you. Cool. So, mindful of the time. I've been here for almost two hours this evening. Uh, Rose said to me Thank today, you. she didn't know how we'd fill it in. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, with it, just want to thank everyone for tuning in. Those of you that have joined us from this New Zealand this evening, thanks a lot for watching and being a part of the community. If there's anything that we can help you with, feel free to reach out to the team, to Rose, to myself, um, and yeah, look forward to being able to help you guys however we can on your journey. Um, on that note, stay safe and uh, keep being awesome, and we'll catch up soon, guys. Have a good evening. Bye for now. Thank you, everyone.